If you'd like to support me on Patreon, please click the link below. Thank you. Superman, the strange visitor from another planet. He's been around for over 80 years, and in that time, he has transcended from the comic book page to the big screen, to the small screen, and even to video game form. The problem is, he's only had a few good games to his name. And no, I'm not talking about this pile of dung either. Today, we're going to talk about the 1988 arcade game from Taito, simply titled Superman. What was the initial plan for the other superheroes in this game? So take off your glasses and rip open your shirt, because this is the history of Superman, the arcade game. In 1938, Jerry Siegel and Joe Shuster created a comic book industry that for all intents and purposes can be considered our modern day mythology. Baby Kal-El was sent away from his dying planet in a rocket to Earth where he would have powers and abilities far beyond those of mortal men. Having been found by Jonathan and Martha Kent, he was raised in secret until the age of 18 when he set out in the world to make a place for himself. He would eventually make his way to Metropolis and introduce himself to the world as Superman. Superman has appeared in various media over the years, including the 1949 serial starring Kirk Allen. In the 1950s, George Reeves took up the mantle, and for many kids across the country, he was Superman. For me, though, the hands-down best version of Superman to ever appear on the screen would have to be Christopher Reeve in the 1978 movie. From the storyline, to the action, to the John Williams score that still gives me goosebumps to this day whenever I hear it, everything about this movie is darn near perfect. Superman has also appeared in various video games including the 1979 game by Atari. This game was one of the most complex games ever created for the system. You have to rebuild the bridge that Lex Luthor destroyed, take the various baddies to jail and also rescue Lois Lane. Superman can fly, has x-ray vision, and super strength. Although a bit limited by today's standards, it did utilize kryptonite in the game as a means of weakening Superman. There is also a phone booth you use to change back into Clark Kent to go back to the Daily Planet. As a side note, this was one of the first games to offer a pause feature in the game. Superman lay dormant for the next eight years until First Star Software released Superman the Game initially for the Commodore 64. This is a series of mini-games that sees you take on the evil forces of Darkseid and all of his minions. The graphics and animation are good, but the controls are way too stiff and the game just isn't really fun to play. The game is interesting as a bit of a curiosity, but really, that's about it. 1988 brought us Superman from Taito. The game was developed by Toshiyuki Nishimura and is part side-scrolling brawler, part shoot-em-up. You take on the role of Superman as he attempts to stop the evil forces of Lex Luthor? No. Brainiac? Nope. Darkseid? Not even close. No. They didn't pick any of the vast array of rogues that Superman has in his gallery. They went with a completely original villain. What kind of sense does that make? The evil Emperor Zaz is trying to take over the world and it's your job as Superman to stop him. The character looks very similar to Brainiac, so I don't know why they just didn't use him instead. Any fan of the 1978 Superman film will immediately recognize the tune in the game's intro. As I mentioned, the game is a two-player simultaneous affair with the first player being Superman and the second player being... Superman? The second player is actually a palette swap with a red costume along with gray underwear and cape. According to Mr. Nishimura, the original plan from DC was to include Shazam, or Captain Marvel as he was initially called as the second player. Rather than split the focus between the two superheroes, they decided to create another version of Superman as the second character. In 1963, 
An imaginary teal was created for Superman issue number 162, titled Superman Red, Superman Blue. Facing a task of unaccomplished goals, Superman invents a kryptonite powered machine that splits him into two people. One with a red costume and one with a blue costume. This was the basis for the second player in the game. Now buried deep in the arcade code is unused character graphics which include a costume female. It's hard to tell who this is, possibly an updated version of Supergirl or even Lois Lane with superpowers. The game takes place across five levels which sees Superman travel the country in an attempt to stop Emperor Zaz. The five levels include Metropolis. San Francisco. Las Vegas. Washington, D.C., which oddly enough has the historical landmarks such as the White House, the Washington Monument, and also Mount Rushmore? And finally, the last level is the spaceship. The first level starts with you on the ground bashing whatever baddie comes your way before taking on a mini boss. You have a super punch and a kind of weak looking kick, but it does get the job done. There are also trash cans and boxes you can destroy for points and power ups. After defeating the mini boss, you ascend upwards, punching and kicking your way to the top. Once you reach the top, you have to fight the boss of that level. One thing you'll notice after playing for just a short time is there is not a lot of variety when it comes to the bad guys that you fight. You will fight the same spandex clad goofballs over and over throughout the game. The second level is purely a shoot 'em up with you flying along as Superman using your heat vision to take out the enemies. Another thing that Superman can do is charge up power balls and throw them at your enemies. I guess if the Superman films can invent new powers for Superman then this game can too. After making it through all the levels, you come face to face with the evil Emperor Zaz. After taking him down, the game is complete, the world is saved, and all is well. After completing a level, you are treated to a congratulations screen featuring the Man of Steel drawn by various artists. One of these images is done by none other than legendary comic artist Neil Adams. The graphics and animation are very good. The controls are nice and responsive and it feels like Superman when you're playing. It does get a bit repetitive, but the upbeat music and frantic gameplay makes it very enjoyable. The sound effects and music are top notch with a John Williams score playing throughout the levels. The game starts out as a bit of a challenge, but once you learn the patterns, it's not that hard. So let's talk about those conversions. Unfortunately, there aren't any. The home license was locked up with developer Sunsoft, so a home conversion of the arcade game was not possible. Sunsoft would attempt to develop an NES game based on Superman, but due to creative differences at DC Comics, the game was scrapped. According to developer Kenji Ino, the game was cancelled because DC did not like the idea of Superman taking damage or dying. After the license for Superman fell through, they attempted to salvage all of their hard work and change the game into an original IP by the name of Sunman. Even though the ROM is essentially complete, the game went unreleased. Some crafty hackers out on the World Wide Web decided to change it back into Superman and it looks and plays awesome. 
They also released an original Sega Genesis Superman game that, to be honest, was a pretty good game. And that wraps up this episode on Superman the Arcade Game. The Man of Steel is definitely an icon. The video game versions? Eh, not so much. Unfortunately, he's had more bad than good. But this game is in the upper echelon of Superman video games. Since there weren't any home conversions, the only way you're going to be able to try this out is to either find it in the arcade or give it a shot on main. If you haven't tried it before, give it a shot. You'll be glad you did. If you like my videos and want to support me on Patreon, please click the link below. Also, if you're a fan of my content, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. It's the only way my channel can grow. Thank you for watching.